Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel. So much easier if I don't have to start this video myself. So as you can see, today's video will be about the Radeon 7, which is currently on my table here and it's Saturday 2 a.m. So actually Sunday 2 a.m. in the morning and originally this was planned on Friday because I have some dry ice sitting on here and my original plan was when I got the card on Wednesday I thought okay that's cool that I have access to the card so early. I will order some dry ice and let's see what we can get out of this card with some extreme cooling methods. Then I started the basic testing with the card so I just did normal benchmark runs like fire strike and superposition to get some baseline scores before we start with some overclocking. Then I opened the typical overclocking tools, so the watt tool and the overdriven tool I think it's called and MSI afterburner and all those tools and I could not access the card. There was zero possibility to access uh, anything like the clocks or voltages or anything like that so I couldn't uh, overclock the card with the typical tools but then we have the wattman inside the AMD driver which I then tried to use. So my first step was um, to use plus 50 megahertz on the GPU and I reran superposition benchmark and a stock score in superposition benchmark 4k preset was about 7700 points but with 50 megahertz overclocking I had like 4500 points so it's almost half the performance and I was like what the hell is going on and then I opened GPU-Z, figured out that I cannot read out anything with GPU-Z as well, so no clocks, no temperature, nothing. So I had to go back to the AMD driver where I can at least read out some of the stuff with the Wattman. And then I figured out that the clocks are really going up and down. Whenever you touch anything inside the Wattman, it screws it up completely. So it doesn't matter if you overclock by 20 megahertz or if you overclock by 100. For some reason, the card is instantly running in something like a power target or a temperature target. So I then thought, okay, if it's a power target, let's just increase the power target by plus 20%, which is something we can do in the Wattman. So increase by plus 20%, same issue. So about, I don't know, like 1,000, 2,000 points less in superposition benchmark, whatever I tried. I tried to touch the HBM. So I went uh, through the different lat latency options. I also tried to downclock the HBM. I tried to increase the clock, which is really funny. So if you increase from 1,000 megahertz to 1,000, 100 for example or 1050 the resulting frequency of the HBM is like 350 or like 500 or 800 so something is really wrong and then I got in contact with PC Games Hardware and I got in contact with uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus so I was talking a lot with him on WhatsApp and Skype and turns out that Steve had exactly the same issues so he could also not access the card with anything else than with the Wattman and whenever he tried to yeah modify anything inside a Wattman, up clock, down clock, uh, under vaulting, whatever, it would always screw up the performance. So nothing really helped. So we got in contact with AMD, asked them, hey, what's going on here? And maybe the driver is broken or whatever. And then the first response was, oh yeah, something seems to be wrong here. So we maybe have to work on a new driver. So I thought, okay, on Friday, um, I will not spent my time on it because obviously if they're working on a new driver, if they're trying to fix this overclocking problem, then I'm not going to waste my time on it because maybe two or three days later with a new driver, I will have the good performance, right? So then I would say four hours ago, Steve messaged me again on WhatsApp that he got some replies from AMD and AMD basically said that the car, that's the way the card works. It's just the card and the driver is not broken. There's nothing they can fix. So I thought, Wow, that's interesting. So yeah, we can go back to dry ice. We can try it. We can at least see if anything works. Let's say we would simulate that we would mount a water cooler. So for example, if we later attach this liquid nitrogen container, which we will obviously fill with dry ice in this case, if we mount it to the cart and let's say we cool it down to plus 20 degrees Celsius, in this way we can kind of simulate some very strong custom water cooling and see if it helps to boost the clock, if it helps to keep the clock stable, maybe we can figure something out or see what the issue is of this card. So that's what we will do now at 2 a.m. in the morning, see how far we can get. I will now mount the container onto the card, fill it with dry ice and we will just see how far we can push the GPU if anything changes. Um, let's see how far we can get.
So just a typical XOC preparation, so we have to remove the stock cooler first, but don't be surprised that I don't really have to remove that many screws. I already unmounted the cooler several times. Also don't be surprised why there is red nail polish already on the GPU. That's because I already performed a liquid metal test on this card to see if there's any benefit using liquid metal on the GPU and you should probably see this video tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And for extreme overclocking, obviously, as usual, we are using a conventional thermal paste, so thermal grizzly cry or not. The Raptor 4 GPU container has a universal mount, so we can basically mount every GPU that's available on the market just by positioning the screws in the correct position. This time I was a bit lazy and didn't insulate the card at all because I also have to use this card for some different purposes at Case King later so I cannot really put Vaseline on the card in this case. So just running the GPU naked without any kind of insulation should be fine for some quick and let's say one or two hour testing. Ice is not electrically conductive so as long as there is just ice we are safe. We just have to make sure that the ice is not melting. However, on the mainboard we're using some towel just to catch any kind of drops that would drop down, especially from the GPU container. When we're um, staying in the area of the freezing point and going up and down in temperature, it's very likely that we will have some water drops on the GPU container, also putting some Armaflex underneath the GPU container to give it some additional stability, so there is not only just load on the PCI Express slot. So we have a thermometer on the left which is mounted inside the GPU container to keep track of the temperature and a current clamp on the right to check the current um, during the run. Today we're using 3mm pellets because they're very convenient to handle but the problem is that they're gone after like 2 or 3 days even in the styrofoam box. After booting into Windows, the first thing we have to do is check the mount and check if the GPU container has proper contact to the GPU. So just open GPU-Z, run the render test for a few seconds. Render test is pulling like 10 to 15 amps, so quite low load. And we can just check the GPU temperature in the driver, which looked fine, so we can be sure that the GPU is mounted correctly. Then also positioning a fan right next to the GPU container just to give some airflow across the VRMs because typically if we're doing XOC it's not really needed. There is a lot of cold inside the PCB which is uh, cooling down the VRM but in this case we want to perform some runs at like 20 degrees Celsius and in this case the PCB is not cold enough to keep the VRMs cold. So performing a run at like 15 to 20 degrees Celsius pot temperature first just to simulate some very strong water cooling to see if there is any improvement. Stock score is about 7750 in superposition and after mounting the dry ice container we achieved almost 7900 so for sure there is an improvement by cooling down the card so if you have a water cooler you can probably get like 1 to 2 percent more performance. Then I thought okay let's maybe try to improve the power target so I increased the power target in the driver by plus 20 percent kept track of the current clamp and I could already see that it still stays at about 21 amp pulling from the two 8-pin connectors so it seemed like there was no change and the benchmark confirmed that the performance did not increase and the clock stayed at the same level of about 17-18 MHz. Then increased the HBM clock by 50 MHz, ran the benchmark again and again we lost performance so we are down by about 5% by increasing the HBM clock. Checking back in the driver I could see that the HBM clock is just running at 800 MHz so there is something extremely wrong in the driver. If you adjust the HBM clock for whatever reason it always completely screws it. Sometimes it goes to like 350 MHz and it goes to 800 MHz so overclocking the HBM at this point doesn't seem to be possible. Then manually overclocking to 1850 while pot is at minus 25 I could see that the current dropped to like 17 amps but then junction temperature was completely off. It was like 65,000 degrees Celsius so we're basically having a sun in my room which is obviously not possible and again the performance was off. 
after trying a bunch of more things like going really down in temperature or undervolting the GPU and trying different curves, I thought, okay, I have nothing else to lose, so let's try, just try this auto overclock feature, which didn't work using the stock cooler because I just had a crash. But then running the auto overclock feature in the driver with dry ice was really surprising because the performance increased from 36 to 39 FPS. And I thought, what the hell is going on? Checked the clocks in the driver and I could see clocks over 2000 megahertz on the GPU. So it's definitely not correct that the card cannot overclock. It's just the driver that cannot handle the settings or cannot adjust the settings correctly. But using the outer overclock feature, we could see that there is an improvement in clocks. I tried again manual overclocking, which didn't work, but then I tried the auto overclock feature again and the card boosted over 2100 MHz. So the card can surely overclock. It's just the driver that's completely screwed and a driver that cannot support overclocking at this point. It's very sad that all those features don't work, that all the third party tools also don't work like GPU-C, Watt tool, MSI Afterburner, all that, no matter what you try, nothing works and it's really frustrating that you get a card like this and it feels like if AMD just spend one more week development on this card trying the features themselves they could maybe find it could maybe find a solution for it send it out to reviewers we would be happy we can do more testing we can deliver better results I just don't understand why we get cards like this in a state like this and they're just not ready whatsoever what I don't understand is why AMD keeps saying that the driver is fine and the card is just the way it is and it just cannot overclock, but that's simply not true. Because you can see with the auto overclock feature and lower temperature, it works. So it's just the driver that's not ready. What's also very interesting is this junction temperature that's always over 100 degrees Celsius using the stock cooler. And the junction temperature seems to be some kind of hotspot inside the GPU because the GPU temperature itself seems to be a sensor that's located somewhere on the edge of the GPU. At least that's the information I got from Steve and he got it from AMD. Steve surely has more content and more information about all of this on his channel. So make sure that you go over to Gamers Nexus, check out his launch video about the Radeon 7. I'm sure he will have more in-depth information and analysis of this card than I have on here. It was still fun to test this card, but I think the card has a lot more potential if we get a driver that actually works. Thank you.